Hi guys, welcome back. Um, right, so I'm Becky from RJF Makes and if you tuned in today you will be wanting to make the Big Brother bag. Um, so this is a free pattern. To go and download it you need to go into um, my Facebook group. Now, I will explain all this in a minute. I'm just waiting for people to come in. If you're new, can you please go into um, the chat and say hi please so I know you're here and yeah so if you're new to my channel i'm going to do this bit now if you're new to my channel and you like this content please can you hit the subscribe button i'm looking that way <laughs> hit the subscribe button and basically um, click the notification bell for any reminders of when this vi any videos go live within the group i need to know if you can hear me or if you can see me and my eyes will be reverting down here um, basically because I can see everybody's comments um, within the group, oh well, within YouTube. Okay, thank you. Right, so I keep looking over here, that's my husband, he's operating the two camera systems for me. Um, and if you can hear traffic, we do live by a main road. So, hi, hi, <laughs> I've got people, yay. Can you hear me okay? I just Because uh, we've moved things around slightly. Um, I'm just making sure that everybody can hear me and then I'll carry on. Right, okay. So, in the description is basically where you can actually um, find how to print this pattern off. You need to have... Hi, Becky Ezra. Um, you need to basically see um, and you need to know how to get this pattern. To get the pattern, you need a Facebook account and then you need to join my Facebook group. Now the link is in the description and Helen Princess will be um, joining in and putting in the comments where links and stuff like that for you guys to link over. The pattern's called the Adventure Big Brother and it's two files. Once you have joined that group and answered the joining questions, basically, so I know you're not a scammer, um, there's Princess, one of my moderators. Um, basically, once you've got into the group, you need to go up to the file section above and then you'll see two files. The first file will be the templates, which are here. And I'll talk about the templates in a minute. And then the second file is the instructions with the actual um, pa um, the pattern pictures and all that lot and how to make it. Hi Susan, another admin is here too right okay if you have any questions please drop it in the um, comments below and if you are not having those answers within this live private message me um, or keep asking the same question um, and I will hop on to the um, the video afterwards after the live this is going to be a sew along for two parts. So we're going to do the first sew along tonight, which we are going to work on the back and the front of the bag. I'm also going to talk to you um, how to make the strap and, um, well the straps, because there's two straps, and um, how to make binding. Now with the straps and the binding, I'm not going to go into full depth into those because I do actually have two YouTube videos in my channel on how to make bias binding and how to make straps. So I'm not going to repeat myself twice, I'm just going to basically talk you through how I did it, what extras I've used because I am using rivets tonight, I don't talk about rivets in the actual pattern and then basically I will go into um, more depth on those two videos. Now Michael please may we go into the um, overhead camera please. You're going to hear that quite a lot. <laughs> it's the green one, please. You need to turn the purple one off. That's it. Yay. <laughs> right, okay. So when you are printing out your pattern, you can print that out as um, if you want to or just leave it onto your iPad and refer back onto your iPad. But when you come to this one, because I wrote this pattern four years ago for... Um, four years ago for Sewing Quarter. Sewing Quarter is a TV channel that I used to work on obviously four years ago and I wrote this pattern for them. 
I didn't have to put in a, um, a one inch measure mark, which I do on my new patterns. So on your printer, you need to set your printer to 100% or actual size when you print out the second file, which is the templates. Now with the printing out, they're all labelled A, B, C, D and E, F, G and all that lot. <laughs> but when it comes to the I one, it's in two parts. You need to cut across this one line here and then basically stick that to that and the two blue arrows will join together and then you basically just cut the shape out then completely. Right, so I'm just going to pop this to one side and talk you through the pattern. I have actually changed a few things since writing this pattern and it's not on your copies It's and also because I haven't got all the hardware in stock so I'm going to talk to you what I've changed and what sizes so you can make a note if you want to use the size um, D rings and stuff that I'm using. Okay so Here, you, it says contrast and main outer fabric. The contrast fabric is the green on the bag and the main outer fabric is the Tula pink, which is the one with the squirrels on. Now, I did have one message prior to this. Um, I had one message prior to this. Um, do we have to have um, contrast and main? No, you can have complete main fabric if you want to, if you just want the one bag to look the same colour all the way around. So if that's the case, you need one and a half metres and just cross out the um, the contrast fabric. I'm doing this in fusible fleece, so that's fusible um, H640, so that's Vaseline or Vaseline, depending on how you want to pronounce it. I'm using that because I know I've got quite a lot of beginners watching tonight and seeing if they can have a go at bag making. You can make this with fusible foam if you want to, Fusible foam is a bit more harder to work with. Um, my advice if if you're using fusible foam, most bag makers will know to either cut the bulk out of the seam or to zigzag all the way around to make the seams a lot thinner. But if you are a new bag maker, please use um, fusible fleece. Right, so the majority of the um, seam allowance is 3 eighths of an inch. 3 eighths of an inch all the way around however I do mention a quarter of an inch a few times so please just keep an eye on those measurements that pop up saying you need to use quarter of an inch seam allowance when I say right side that's RS that's right side of your fabric so the pattern side or the coloured side is your right side of your fabric your wrong side your WS is your wrong side which is where you normally have interfacing attached now I'm going to just talk a bit about interfacing I, I tell you to use a medium weight interfacing because you're using fusible fleece my advice is to go and use a woven interfacing so I'm using um, my own brand which is fuse it woven I do it in black and white and it's reasonably priced as well it's like a cotton muslin but tighter weave than muslin and it's got a glue side now it makes your fabric and as you can see it's made my fabric like a canvas fabric now to work with as in weight now you can use a non-woven if you're going to use a non-woven you need to use something like fuse it non-woven which is my other other brand or a visaline 22 220 f220 and that's a medium weight now the fusible fleece i've only i've only ever used visaline um h640 h640 has got a nice loft to it so if i just show you the loft of h640 so h640 is about just under a quarter of an inch thick before you squash it together it's a nice loft and once it's on your fabric it does have some body to it as well right okay 
you are going to find some spelling mistakes going through i've noticed this today when i've been cutting out and stuff like that the spelling mistakes i'm dyslexic and this would have gone off to a publisher's um however i've got the permission to go ahead and start releasing some of the patterns that were for the publishers and they've said that there was spelling mistakes and editors corrected those obviously for editing purposes however i haven't gone in and corrected those there is no measurement problems it's just that the fact that there is some spelling mistakes free so please bear that in mind now i'm just going to talk to you about my hardware right so on the back of the bag there is a large d-ring if i show you the picture <clears throat> wow good morning where is everybody from i'm seeing good morning here so is that australia <laughs> right okay so you got a d-ring here in the center i don't know if you can see that where you can loop one strap or click both straps to this part here now because i haven't got a 30 mil um d-ring i'm using what i've what i sell in the shop which is a one inch snap ring so i've had to change the measurements of my cutting out so if you are using a d-ring that's one inch wide or one of my one inch snap rings you need to cut your measurements so that's your large d-ring tab at the moment before before if you're using a 30 millimeter um, d-ring it's two inches by four inches i'm actually cut mine down to one and a half inches by four inches that's just so it will fit and be nice and sturdy and not roll up at the sides and then with the medium d-rings and the small d-rings i'm using um these so i'm getting these in stock soon so basically this little gap at the bottom this oblong is where the actual tab's going to feed through now i have said three inches for the medium d-ring three inches by four and a half inches i've changed that because i'm using this to one and a half inches by four and a half inches and that's the same with the small d-rings in the contrast fabric as well so i will go through those um those on the actual um when we come to making those in the actual pattern i'm not going to go through the measurements because you can go into the facebook group and print this off and or have it up on your tablet so i'm just going to talk through some elements of what i've used um hardware wise and where i've got it from it's not all from my shop so i'm just letting you know that right so i've got some snaps cam snaps which are basically like poppers what you get on baby grows and that that's for the front pocket and um, i've got this little button here that i'm going to sew on because it's got my branding on that's from durham designs in the uk however you can use one of the handmade the metal metal handmade tags i've got these which obviously are from these are my samples actually these are my samples that obviously i'll be getting some of these in stock but these are not one these are not one inch these are three quarter inch wide for the tabs i've got four of those obviously those would have been my d-rings i've got my one inch snap ring so it's got a little trigger on it and then i've got two three number three zips which i've installed the um zip pulls on these are coming back into stock because i know a lot of people keep messaging me now you need a number five zip now i know a lot of you don't know the difference between number fives and number three so i'm just going to talk to you about number fives and number three zips so if you look at the number three zip here the coil in the center is three millimeters from three millimeter uh, that's three millimeters wide from my nail to nail now on a number five zip this is between five millimeters and seven millimeters between and that's what they call a number five zip you will find a number five zip is wider as well so it's like from here to here it's one and a quarter inches wide 
on a number three standard zip width is one inch now this is my own zipper tape that I sell in my shop but these are from um, this one definitely is from Country Cow Designs in the UK it's her own design it's a nice little pull that says handmade and I think she sells these I'm not 100% it's the same company that she does sell so you might want to go on Country Cow Designs and have a look um, where they're from right let me just have a quick look at the messages and then I'll get on right I think my admin has got that into hand thanks admin right as in thread wise I'm using scan fill which is a polyester thread I'm not using this color it's just one that I've grabbed from my stock um, it's just a strong thread do not use orofil on bag making orofil is a cotton and if you are using it in your str straps um, it can snap over time so you need something that's got a bit of an elasticity which is a polyester thread so hence why I'm using scan fill thread or you can use Gutemann sew all thread or if you've got an industrial sewing machine um, you can use um, Tex 40 which is slightly thicker now you can use this in a domestic machine but you've got to remember to turn off your cutter if you've got a manual cutter um, electronic cutter on your sewing machine because this thread can blunt your blade However, I don't use this on my domestic because I've got a habit of forgetting to turn off my cutter and keep pressing the button and obviously I don't want to dull my blade any more than what I've already have. Right, so we're going to jump right into it. Like I said, we're only making um, the back and the front and going on to the base panel. So I've gone ahead and made my straps. I went onto the YouTube video that I um, have in my actual um, channel and made two straps. So you need two swirl clasps and for one strap and a, um, a slider. And then for the other strap, you need exactly the same. Those are all one inch wide ones. And then I've added a rivet now I'm going to add some rivets onto the bag if you're new to bag making you like the look of these what I ended up doing was I folded it in half the actual fabric opened it up so I got the center crease folded the two long sides into the center gave that a good press and then basically folded it again and then gave it a good press now I don't like having raw edges on the end of my straps and um, I know some designers do that um, I don't personally like raw edges so if you follow the video you will basically hide all your raw edges inside and there is no bulk as you can see that's a really slim and thin strap finish your left over um, let me just chuck that over there <laughs> Your left over, there it is. Your left over lining, you need to cut at the 45. Now I've cut way over the odds here because I've got another project using the same green. Right, so your left over lining, you need to cut on the 45 degree angle. Now, if you hop over to that second video, which is how to make the um, how to make uh, bias binding. Your bias binding needs to be on the stretch, hence why we cut it at the 45 degrees. So as you can see, I'm stretching that. I teach you how to cut it my way. Now there is loads of videos out there that does the, um, what, the tube. I can't do the tube. I've always done this way. It's what my mum's taught me. I've tried to grasp the tube and I can't do it, so have a go at my way if you don't like my way because there is a, a bit of wastage find tube um, bias binding there is a lot of tutorials out there that does it now as princess has just put into the comments there is 10% off my shop um, until the 29th of January 
and that's off everything apart from e-cards and the sign up for the online club right let me just quickly oops i use oh, full on bags i just posted on facebook yeah you right so your bag angie um you can actually use RFL on it it's anything that's got a strap um so if you've got a shoulder strap or crossbody strap you need to use um definitely a one that's got a elasticity in the actual thread it, if i pull this it won't snap um here it is so if i pull that I'm it only just snaps now if i go for this one this is rfl this is so thin that's just snapped really easily so just bear that in mind when you make a shoulder strap or a um, crossbody strap please do use a just even if it's the same colour just go over to a polyester thread right so we're going to work on the handles first so that's the, the handle at the top of the bag which is this bit here it's a rolled handle you need a walking foot on your sewing machine for this part at least right okay thanks Lynn <laughs> right okay I'll tell you why Lynn's saying that it's because uh, I've been a bit nervous for the last two weeks saying hmm I can do Facebook lives but YouTube lives are to so new to me um, but it, it's running what fine actually running quite far better than our Facebook lives guys so yeah right so I've already made one it's going to end up looking like this so we're going to move on to the next one so you've got your handle you're going to fold it in half wrong sides together and give that a really good press along that edge there then you're going to open it out and those two long edges have got to meet into the center where that folded crease was and then you're going to fold it again now we're not going to sew around that yet we need to close off those edges so we don't have a raw edge so this is what you will be doing on your long straps on your bag once you've folded it and given it a really good press like this you're going to unfold it but keep those two parts in the center meter then you're going to bring them up the two folded edges up to the top so they meet and you're going to run a clip here and you're going to do it to the other side so you're going to fold it so your two folded edges meet at the top So the next thing you're going to do is from this edge here where the two raw edges meet that inner fold you're going to sew a quarter of an inch away from this edge here and you're going to reverse your stitch at the start and at the end i'm going to use a stitch a standard stitch length on my domestic sewing machine i'm using stitch length 2.5 i'm going to have my walking foot on for the majority of this project apart from when it comes to um, implementing the back zip on the back panel so I'm going to keep my walking foot on and I've got a size 16 needle now you can use a text um, a, a size 14 needle want if you want to now if you're using um, PU leather because I know a lot of you like to use PU leather if you're using PU leather you basically need to um, use a, a jean needle or a strong universal needle please do not use a leather needle because that perforates the um, the actual material and it can basically split the material as well in time so if I ask my husband Michael to go to the other camera please thank you right we are working on getting a third camera the third camera wasn't like in this sewing machine so I'm gonna top I'm um, gonna stitch a quarter of an inch seam on this using a stitch over 2.4 Make sure you reverse your stitches at the start and at the end of each row. Just going to put those on. And then I'm just going to do what we call in quilting chain stitching, um, piecing. 
so I don't get any, many many bird birds nests. <coughs> okay, please let me go to the overhead. Thank you. Thanks. Right. Okay. So I've sewn quarter of an inch away from the edge on both of those ends and as you can see it's like a, a bit of a boat on those two. We need to trim off the excess so I'm going to trim it at an angle on the two sides going into where that that actual row of stitching is and then I'm going to go one eighth of an inch away or as close as you can get it but without cutting your stitches. You're going to do that for both pieces. Um, Dawn Scrivens has said hello, Michael. <laughs> right, and then you're going to get your finger up inside here. You're going to get the your thumb here, and you're going to push it out. So it's a nice, neat edge. Get your pokey tool up inside. When it goes, there you go. Get your pokey tool up inside so you've got that nice corner. You're going to do the same with this one. Form or finger inside, finger or form on the outside and push out. Hi everybody. Right, okay, so you've got an open gap here. You're going to put some clips along this edge here. doesn't have to be that many okay then you're going to top stitch one eighth of an inch all the way around that's including the shorter ends you're going to start off on this side which is open because if you start off at this side you're guaranteed to get creases and puckers on this side so always start off at the bottom end where the um, side is open approximately one eighth of an inch away it doesn't have to be one eighth of an inch away you can do one sixteenth of an inch away if you're feeling dairy but I say one eighth of an inch for those who are still learning just get rid of those bits okay so please maybe go to the front view camera I'm going to knock my stitch length up because I'm top stitching to a 3.5 there you go and make sure you reverse your stitch just a few stitches at the start and at the end to pivot around that corner and keep my foot down needles down when you pivot round. Please now we go to the overhead camera. Thank you. Thanks. Oh thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sometimes I do over ex explain, so thanks. <laughs> right, okay, so you've now got a perfectly nice handle. Now, if you think your machine's not going to cope doing eight layers, well, it's eight layers, it's actually 16 layers when you think about it because you've got the interface and inside there as well. If you think your machine's not going to cope, you can leave your strap as it is. However, if you want to have a go, have a go. 
Now I find that I have to move my needle over and I'll explain that in a minute. Um, so my foot is actually riding flat on this rather than off at an angle because you don't want it at an angle because that's when you get slip stitches. Right, so from the two short ends you need to measure in two and a half inches. Now I'm going to use a friction pen. I know some people don't like friction pens so just use whatever marker is comfortable to you. But it's got to be able to disappear. So friction pens on this will disappear and hopefully won't come back. So there's my first line. And there's my second line. Okay, so where those two lines are, I'm going to flip this over and what will happen is when we fold it, so the two edges, long edges meet, we need to match up that edge, that line there to that line this side. And we're just going to pop a clip. Just means that your strap or handle is going to be perfectly and not have a wonk in it. And if you do the same on this end, Hold it over so that line there matches that line there yep I'm just going to pop a clip on that and then I'm just going to run some clips along this bringing those two edges up close together the more clips you can have the better because it can spring open like it did earlier when I did that one Okay, so I've now got all clips on that one side. So where we have top stitched previously between that mark and that mark, we are now going to top stitch along that top stitching that you can see. And that's from that mark to that mark. Now when you've got your um, walking foot or whatever foot that you're going to use. So this is my walking foot. It's not my walking foot, but I'm using this as a, an example. If I don't move my needle position, my foot's going to ride like that, which means it's going to skip stitches. We need it to run flat. Now, to make it run flat on my walking foot, because it's an ultra-wide walking foot, I need to move my needle over. So I'm going to move it over to the left as far as it will go. And then once it's moved over, it means that my walking foot will be flat, and I've already got my guide of where I need to sew because I've got the top stitch in. So you're going to go from there to there, which is your two marks. Reverse your stitch at the start and at the end. I'm going to use a stitch length four because I've got quite a large amount of bulk there. Now this is where you do need a good strong needle in your sewing machine. Please may we go to the front view, please. So I'm knocking my stitch length up to number four. And I'm going to start off at that first mark. Just get rid of that. Clip. Wonder clips are great, but they just don't go underneath this foot very well. Just going to need my stiletto to keep it into position. Right, so I'm reversing my stitch. I've done about three stitches and now I'm just going to go nice and slow. My needle has moved over because that's what I was pressing at the same time. And if 
you go nice and slow you'll be able to go over the stitches that way you've already made fingers crossed mine's just gone off but there you go we're not perfect And now I've just come up to that line and I'm just going to reverse and stitch a few times. There you go, and then just cut your thread. Just making sure I've got to set this back before I go and start stitching. Please let me go to the other camera, Michael, please. Thank you. Michael doesn't know terminologies of sewing, so I have to say, can you go to one camera and can you go to the other? So I apologise if that offends anybody, but... <laughs> right, okay, I'm just cutting off any loose pieces of thread and then I'm just going to get rid of those lines with the heat of my iron. We don't need those lines again. And you can flatten that part out if you want to, if it helps you for the next few steps. So it just basically nice and makes that nice and flat. I'll do that to this one as well. Right, okay, so you've got your two handles. You're now going to pop those to one side because we're going to move on to the next part. Now, the next part is to make the handle keeper. I'm going to make the handle keeper, that's the bit that wraps around at the top of the handles. I'm going to make that at the very end on Sew Along 2. There's a simple reason for that is when I wrote this pattern, the strap keeper wasn't anchored onto any of the handles. So I basically... Um, I'm going to show you how I would anchor it onto the handle so there's no point of making it now I'll rather make it later right so the next thing we're going to do is make the front outer slip pocket so that's this little part here with one of these cam snaps on so you're going to need your pattern pieces when I find them what's on my pieces E and F Now this is where we're going to change the um, the stitch. No, we're sewing these using a three eighths of an inch seam allowance as well. It's the ha handle keeper that's um, one quarter of an inch. Right, so obviously you can tell by the shapes, the F is the actual um, flap and the E is the actual pocket. I'm gonna work on the this part first which is the E you got your lining and your outer and both of those I've interfaced with my fuse it um, interfacing you're going to pop those right sides together and you're going to clip all the way around So this straight edge here, we need to leave a turning gap, just enough so you can get your four fingers or three fingers free. So I personally like to draw that on. Shouldn't have put this pen away. So I'm going to leave around about a three inch turning gap. So I'm going to sew three eighths of an inch all the way around from this point here to this point here. I'm not going to sew this point. Going to use a standard stitch length at a 2.4 or 2.5 depending on your sewing machine. Make sure you reverse your stitches at the start and at the end because we'll be tugging when we're turning it um, right side facing out. Please may we go to the other camera please. Thank you. Doing a good job there Michael. Mm 
<laughs> Don't forget you're using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way around. When it comes to the corners, you can pivot if you want to, so basically make sure your needle's down. And make sure you lift up your presser foot when you go around. Mine automatically lifts up when I take my foot off the pedal. But leaves my needle down. If you're wondering what sewing machine I'm using, I'm using the Elna 780 Plus. I nearly said the Pro. Is it the Plus? Yeah, it's the Plus. <laughs> reverse my stitch because I've just come to the end. Please may we go to the overhead please. Thank you. Right okay so you've stitched all the way around and you've gone to your two markers. We need to get rid of these two corners. So you're going to snip at an angle. And then personally I like to leave this bit here because it leaves that seam allowance but I do trim all the way around. Now I'm going to trim it back to about one eighth of an inch away from that sewn edge. Because we're doing one eighth of an inch away it means that you don't have to um, snip into those corners and make them a crisp corner because they turn out crisp by doing one eighth of an inch away. Right, okay, you've got that top turning point now, you're going to get your hands right in and turn it right side facing out. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. If you're stuck on something um, bag related regarding my patterns, if you are a person that's made my patterns before, please don't ask while I'm here and if I can see it pop up on the live um, feed chat please do because the more interaction the better and then means that I can know people are actually interested. Okay so I've turned that right side facing out and I pointed out, I poked out the corners, not very well, I'm just going to go back in. Okay I'm going to push that seam, that open seam up inside and I'm going to give that a really good press. going to make sure those two that you can't see that line in so what I do is I always press from the back first and press my line in part first because I can readjust the the first the the main outer bit afterwards so I've pressed it I'm just going to flip that over and then roll that to that lining piece there and then I'm just going to press it down now this pocket is just for little bits like um, a trolley coin or I carry like three or four keys to my parents house in mine that I used to carry before I got rid of my sample and um, it's just basically a small pocket now if you want to make a bigger pocket you can you can add a pleat into it if you know how to totally up to you when I say follow the instructions I don't mean to the T make it more unique to yourself if you want to that's what the whole point of bag making is planning a later day oh oh you're talking you're talking between yourselves that's great right you're gonna top stitch one eighth of an inch away on that straight edge not the cornered edges at the bottom here and you're going to do um, reverse your stitch at the start and at the end 
I'm going to use a stitch length number three on my sewing machine. Please, may we go to the front view camera? So that's stitch length number three. And make sure you reverse your stitch at the start and at the end. Sorry, you'll get used to that. <laughs> the plan is to get a switcher so I can do it all myself um, eventually. A switcher board. They're not very cheap, so that's the plan. Right, okay, so I've done that. I'm going to pop that to one side. I'm just going to go on to the actual um, flap. Now, with the flap, we need to leave a turning gap at the top here as well so we're going to pop those right sides together I've got just interfacing um, onto the wrong side of those you can pop that on top of each other and you're going to clip all the way around you don't have to draw on your markings but just remember to leave a small turning gap at the top Now if you have got the pivot thing um, that I've got on my sewing machine where the needle gets put down when I take my foot off the presser foot um, and the uh, presser foot rises, it'd be ideal to turn it on if you haven't turned it on already. If not, you're just going to have to keep your needle down, lift up your presser foot manually just to go around the corner and just do a three or four stitches at a time and then just obviously readjust the, um, the actual going around the curve. Please maybe we go to the overhead camera. I mean the other camera, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already on the overhead camera. We're using a stitch length 2.4 or 2.5 depending on your sewing machine. And we're using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Don't forget to leave that turning gap at the top. Please may we go to the overhead camera. Thank you. Right, so I've stitched around the edge, but leaving that turning gap there. I'm gonna do the same, cut into the corners. I'm about one sixteenth away from where that corner is. And same here. Okay, I'm going to leave that top seam as it is and then basically poor ninja right so Dawn Scrivens has just said poor ninja you're probably wondering who ninja is that's what my husband's nickname is the the ginger ninja so <laughs> poor ninja he's had his cabbage cream egg he's fine <laughs> Right, so once again, going through that top part here and then turning it right side facing eye and then poking out all those corners. Now I know, I know someone's going to say my sloth's upside down. He's hanging from a tree, so he's not upside down. How do I know? Because I've already made this pocket once, or this flat once, and he was upside down. He was up, he was standing up on the um, branch. Okay, so 
And while that's out, you're going to run So what I'm doing is running the stick along that seam, crushing the fibre so it sits nice. Okay, so I'm going to do the foot that what I did before, push the lining down first, press that, flip it over and then press the main fabric. Right, I need my piece of wood. Right, so start off the lining side. Press that and flip it over and line that up. And then you're just going to roll it and make sure that's neat because I don't want any of the green showing. Then I'll probably just adjust that bit there. Okay, so I'm going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away all the way around this curved edge here. Reverse my stitch at the start and at the end. I'm not going to top stitch this part here at the moment because I'm going to leave that for when I attach it to the um, the main front of the bag. So please may we go to the front view camera please. Thank you. There you go. Right. Now I can see some of my lining but I'm not, I am bothered but I'm not bothered to the point where I have to unpick it. Please may we go to the other camera please Michael. <laughs> right so I've top stitched all the way around that curve. As you can see, I can see a bit of my line in here. I don't know if you can see that. I'm not 100% happy with it, but it's not to the point where I have to unpick it. Okay. So we're going to pop those two flat um, pocket pieces to one side. That's going to be for the next step. So you need to grab, when I can grab it myself, your A pieces and your G pieces. So I've already gone ahead and assembled one which is my G pieces at the bottom and my A pieces at the top and I've fused the fusible fleece and as you can see that's got quite a lot of loft to it now so it basically um, it has sit nicely and stand upright the bag. I always have trouble top stitching curves I'm never sure when or how much to move my fabric around. Right, okay, so that's a good question. Um, now, depending on what type of sewing machine that you're using, I use one that's got a dual aqua feed. Now, a dual aqua feed helps with the um, how much it m wiggles. Um, so, when you've got a weave in your actual fabric, wherever the needle falls, and then the next needle point falls if it doesn't fall in line with that weave it can go off at an angle now what you're talking about is if you've got something called um, the actual presser foot up and down I've been I've been so impressed with all the sew alongs it feels like being in the classroom as <laughs> Right, okay, so with the presser foot thing that I've got is where the needle kept, keeps down. If you've got that, use that. That's the best thing since sliced bread, warm sliced bread. I'm going to add the warm sliced bread because I love my warm, warm home-cooked bread. You only need to move it around a fraction. Now, 
do you use the guides on your sewing machine um, on the foot plate I personally do get used to using those guides so if you're got this going around the corner I will still make sure that this is still touching the one eighth of an inch or or three eighths of an inch or quarter of an inch depending on what what top stitch you're doing making sure that you're actually still got it at a a quarter of an inch or one eighth of an inch away use those guides don't look at the piece of fabric that you've got underneath always look at the guides that's how I've managed to learn but it is a thing that you need to practice now I have got a bag pattern coming out that has actually has got a curve on it and I mean a full circle I've actually got two bags um, coming out this year they've got full circles I do say in the pattern on the one you do need to keep a full keep an eye on the actual seam guides on your actual flatbed where your feed dogs are now if you don't know what feed dogs are it's where the jagged bits are um, on your actual um, foot plate right <clears throat> if you want me to do videos on how to top stitch please um, comment below and I can do one for the actual YouTube channel and do a close-up video of that Right, so let's get rid of those pins. Just bear with me, I'm just going to grab a drink. <laughs> Michael's saying no, that's not allowed. However, talking about seams and top stitching, especially on straps or handles, I've actually got two gadgets coming as trials. Um, they clip onto your actual sewing machine and you put the strap in between it and it means that you get a perfect stitch so I'm going to try all those out before I've actually kind of manufactured them myself I've got a company working with me now if it works on this sewing machine then it will work on any sewing machine so leave it with me I am working on top stitching because I know that's one of the people's pet hate it was always my pet hate okay I'll do a video in the next next month or so maybe in next month to be fair right okay I've got my G piece and my A piece I've only got the interface and attached at the moment on the wrong side this is my top of my bag where the two curves are this flat bit here is where we need to attach the G piece and obviously it's common sense you need to do the two straight edges pop those right sides together Sorry, Michael, there's a clip on the floor, but you can get it afterwards. <laughs> I do love my husband. I don't always order him around. It's just like, <laughs> he's laughing. <laughs> oh, yeah, blind hem foot. But sometimes you can't use a blind hem foot on um, bulky areas, but you can use it on likes of um, top stitching those handles before we actually did this part here the rolled ha handle that's a very good tip that is right so you're gonna stitch three eighths of an inch away from this straight edge reverse your stitch at the start and at the end and I'm gonna use a standard stitch length of a 2.5 please may we go to the um, yeah the other camera right <laughs> There is a third camera coming in, you know. <laughs> you're only just, I need that box, yeah, because you've only just learned this. <laughs> right, so I've reversed my stitch and I'm doing three eighths of an inch away from the edge. And I've reversed my stitch at the end as well. This is where we go to the okay. other camera. Great, thank you. Okay, so I've top stitched. Um, I mean, I've stitched those together. Okay, 
Okay, I'm going to set my seam, a bit like what we do in quilting. And I'm just going to press this so the seam is pointing towards the green or the G. I'm saying green, it's teal. Oh, that's hot. It's a bit hot. Okay. I'm going to leave that iron on, Michael, so please be careful because I've got fusible fleece going on next. Okay. Okay, so I'm top stitching before I fuse the fusible fleece. If I if I fuse the fusible fleece and I top stitch, what will happen is the, the actual fusible fleece will bend because it's actually got weaker because I've top stitched. Now, if you top stitch before we fuse the fusible fleece, it means that it's, it's strong in that area and not weak. So I'm going to top stitch. Let me just check my top stitch here. So I used a stitch length um, 3.5 going along this edge here. And I've top stitched, um, well I've done 1 16th, but if you're not happy with 1 16th, do 1 8th of an inch away from where the two pieces join. Please may we go to the other camera please. Thank you. Thank you. Changing my stitch length. Okay. I'm not reversing my stitch because I know this this part will be locked into a seam in later in a later stage. Please, may we go to the other camera, please, Michael? <laughs> nag, nag, whip, whip. <laughs> right, okay, so you're going to need your fusible fleece. Now, on your fusible fleece, you've got, um, on H640, that is, you've got a, um, a fleecy side, and then on the other side, it's like a bobbly, um, gluey side. We're going to pop the glue side facing up on the mat, so that's the fleece side facing down. Then you're going to get the, the body piece that we've just sewn, and the interfacing side needs to match up to the glue side of the fleece. Now if you haven't cut it properly, and it's overhanging a lot, you need to put a pressing cloth on top of this. Now mine's fine to do because I've only got a little bit of overhang there. Make sure you've got a bit of steam in your iron, a um, bit of water, and just press it into the center and let the glue set at the back. So that's fused. Just turn this up a bit. And then I'm just moving it along. I'm not rubbing it you can add a bit of steam and having a wall mat means that it bounces between the iron and the wall and the actual thing that you're pressing Thank you. It's um, the one that I sell in my shop. Um, if you're in the club, you obviously get more discount. If you're watching this and you want this fabric um, and you're an overseas person, I can actually um, send it to you, but um, you can't check out of my website because of um, I need to find out what the overseas rate is for your um, country. But it's if anybody wants to know what it is, it's AGF. Um, it's art gallery fabric um, and it's a jungle one. I don't know what jungle one it is. <laughs> right, I've got a bit of overhang here of um, fusible flow, so I'm just going to trim that back. So. so, 
So if you've done your back and the front at the same time, this is the point where you can match it up. So your G's should fall in the same place on both front and back. Your corners and they should be the right size. That's perfect. Right, okay, so out of those, that's going to be my front and this is going to be my back. So I'm going to pop my back piece to one side. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is add the snaps to the actual slip pocket of the actual front pocket. So I'll see, that's going to go there. Okay, so, didn't roll that properly. Okay, so we're going to do this one first. I don't know if any of you have actually um, installed cam snaps before, but I have got a cam snap video within my um, YouTube. So I'll show you what these parts are. I won't need two of those. I do sell these in big containers of different colours, um, but I've got these from somewhere and I don't know where these are from. So and I like pink. Okay, so these are the foam tack parts. This is where the cap is. So that's the flat bit that's always seen on the outside of the um, whatever garment it is. In the centre, it's actually got a bit that sticks out. Now I'm hoping you can see that. Yep, that bit is the bit that's the tube that attaches the other part which is either the female or the male when it comes to cam snaps you need two one for your male and one for your female so i'm going to pop those to one side then you've got these parts here you've got the female part which is the the one with the pimple going in people are going to laugh at me now when i my terminology and then you've got the male which is the the tube that is sticking out so one will go with that one and one will go with that one. The female will go on, that's the one with the pimple going inside. The female is the one that goes on the flap. So I'm just going to pop that there. I'm going to work with the male. Now I'm just going to have to read the measurements, just bear with me. <laughs> Okay, uh, da, 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 da. use the measurements, take the flat part of the pocket, blah blah blah. Okay, taking the slip pocket. What about the snaps? The snaps. Ah, there you go. Snaps. One bit. Snaps. No, one bit. Where's that? Oh, there it is. Okay. Du, 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 du. So all the way around. Uh, manufacturer's instructions. Oh, right. Okay. Right. Okay. So. You're going to eyeball this. You can measure using my measurements that I give you now because that's slightly off because of it's a metal snap I've just realized right so I'm going to pop this onto my and I know that has to be three quarters of an inch up from the bottom and this part needs to be how many inches down from the top Big six and a quarter. So where's my quarters rule? I get quarters rule. Six and a quarter inches down. So that flap edge, that straight edge will fall there. Now I'm going to pop a marking in chalk 
or pencil. I've got a chalk pencil here. Around about where I want that snap to fall. I'm going to have that snap fall in on his um, back, unfortunately. Or her back, depending on what you want to... Okay, so I've, I've got mine there. So that's a measurement from the centre. That is three quarters of an inches up on the flap. So I'm going to poke that hole in now. So I'm going to get my tailors all. Make sure that's definitely in my centre. So I'm going to fold it, crease it and measure up. Okay, and it was perfectly in the centre. So I'm going to poke this tailors all all the way through to the back. Okay, so you've got a nice little hole. Then you're going to get your male part first and your thumb tack. So the cap of the cam snap needs to poke through there. So you've got the flat side and the pokey side coming out when it wants to. There you go. As you can see, it's coming out there. Then you're going to get the female. Now you need a tool. Now you could have it as a rivet press or a cam snap tool, which I've got. Or you can buy parts or get parts that go on this to set a cam snap. I've lost my parts for that. <laughs> so I'm using a traditional old fashioned cam snap pliers. So you've got a black part here which is where the cap sits in and then you've got a, like a spongy see-through part or it could be a different colour on yours. That is where the, um, the female or the male sits. Okay, so you're going to feed this on. Make sure your snap is sitting perfectly in that area, that little area, that cup and making sure that rubber is going perfectly over the female or male and what's going to happen is that pin that we posted through once when we squeeze this down it's going to split and crush and then basically hold that into place now in the center where that pin was sticking out is now flat and perfect right so measure down again six and a quarter and if I just get the other quarter wall here, measure three quarters of an inch up. Make sure that's three quarters. I'm gonna fold that in half, just so I know where my centre is. Pop that on the edge of that roll there. And what I'm going to do is now peel this back, but keeping my finger on that cam snap and find where that center is and then just draw a hole, uh, draw a mark. So I've got my mark there and that's where that second snap needs to go. So the second snap this time, because we need to install the female bit which is the bit that clips into the fem uh, the male. This is the bit that goes on the outer side of your fabric. And then this part is the bit that goes inside on the line inside. So I'm gonna poke a hole in that area there. Okay, flip that over, put my, s my actual flat part with the pokey bit going through to the right side of the pocket. Okay, get your female, pop that on top. Now the female does go on, you just gotta push it down. Just push it down, there you go. So the little pokey bit that's, I, I don't think you can see the little pokey bit that's sticking out in the center. And then you're just going to squash it down like before. Make sure the two pits are between your two plier bits and squash. 
there you go and that centre bit has basically crushed and you can snap that on and snap it off that's how easy a cam snap is to install mine is squeaky mine need glue, um, oiling <clears throat> right so we need to basically stick these um, onto here now I'm going to use quilters tape a lot of you will know that I like my wash away tape or quilters tape rather than pinning so pop my flap there I'm just going to run quilters tape along this edge here not along that that edge If you can see some of the quilters tape once you finish stitching, um, it is actually water soluble. So if you get a bit of water on it, it does actually dissolve in time. Especially if you've got the wash away one. Okay, I'm just gonna peel off those backing pieces. Okay, find the centre top and the centre bottom of this panel. So I'm going to match up this edge to this edge here to make sure that's level. And I'm going to snip into a quarter of an inch at the top and at the bottom. Yeah, it's the best stuff. I love quilted tape. You'll see me use that quite a lot on this channel going to measure up three quarters of an inch from that center so my center is going to be on this line here measure three quarters of an inch up so that's three quarters of an inch make sure your rule is straight as well because you don't want a crooked pocket okay so I kind of know where my center is but if you've lost the center at the bottom just give that a good finger press okay and then you're just going to put the edge of the slip pocket up against the roller and stick that down okay and then just to make sure that's level and straight pop your quarters rule on the top along that edge there and make sure it's straight there so the next thing I'm going to do is top stitch around here one eighth of an inch away I'm just going to roll this a bit because it didn't press right I'm not happy with that Just make sure it's pressed neatly as well because mine is going to curve up. What I'm just doing is teasing that down and just going to pop the iron on that to buzz better. Thank you, Michael. Sorry if there's any offensive. Um, comments please do grab one of the monitors or my husband will try and catch them because um, then we need to delete them all oh, right okay that's great thank you yeah I know I know yeah right so I'm top stitching one eighth of an inch away all the way around this curved edge and down the two straight edges going to use a stitch length 3.5 and then um, I'll meet then I'll add the um, the flap next step please may we go to the other camera please thank you I'm already on 3.5 now if you really want to you could have had piping so if you're not new to bag making, a lot of bag makers use piping um, to just make seams 
a bit different or matching piping will look really nice in case piping. Make sure you reverse your stitch at the end as well because obviously you're going to have little hands in there. Okay. Okay. Please, may we go to the other camera, please? Oh, it's looking so pretty. Thank you. <laughs> it's looking so pretty. Pretty like. Pretty like. Okay. Okay, so you're going to get the flap and you're going to run quilter's tape along that edge. You don't have to use quilter's tape, you can pin it if you want to. And you're going to run that along that edge. Not with them, but with these. Okay, so we're going to snap that into place. Not going to stick it down yet. And I'm going to just make sure before you stick it down that it's nice and center and straight so yeah I'm sticking that down there okay now you're going to top stitch reverse your stitch at the start and at the end across this end from this um, straight edge now you can do two rows of stitches if you want to feel confident um, Personally, I'm just going to do one row of stitches and then what I'll do is once I've done one row of stitches afterwards on after the live I'll run a bit of damp water damp water water is damp um a bit of water along that edge and basically um uh that will dissolve the stickiness and dissolve that quilter's tape yeah please now we go to the machine camera please Thank You. okay so the pockets on the flaps done just going to get rid of that piece the, that loose thread okay so the next thing you're going to do is attach the first handle so that's going to go there so the first you're going to need two quilters rule or I like to draw on so I know I'm getting it perfect now you need to measure in and down so from the top we're measuring three inches one two three three inches and i'm just going to get my friction pen or chalk and i'm just going to draw a line here and here so I've got my two lines here and here. Probably can't see that on the camera. It's there and there. Then I'm going to measure in from the sides one and a quarter inches. Yeah, one and a quarter. And draw a line up. There. And there. Okay, so quilters tape again or pin. Work out which is the wrong side of your handle. The wrong side of your handle is where the two parts meet. 
so the folded um, you've got basically like a slightly open part there you've got a nice round curvy edge there that's your front you're going to run quilters tape along these bottom straight flat bits can use fabri tac um, I can't use fabri tac because it sets off my asthma but um, you can use um, a strong glue if you want to totally up to you it's only for temporary measures because you're going to sew it in that area anyway and then I'm going to go one step further and add some rivets you can add some Chicago screws if you want to like I say totally up to you and I've just cut that with that no well okay so I'm going to peel off the backing tape burnish that into place first because it's not peeling off well there you go I'm going to flip that over and you should have have an L shape here your strap is going to go and match up your edge of the, the handle should match up to that bottom line that you drawn. That dry line that you drew here should match up to this part of the handle here. You need to make a U shape and do exactly the same for this side here as well. And stick that into place now I personally because I'm top stitching and I'm top stitching away from where the seam guide will be I like to draw on at least the top part of where I'm going to sew so I'm going to sew a rectangle so I'm going to go on top of the stitches that I've already made on the handle but I need to know where I'm going to end up here so I like to use this rule this is one and a half inches wide and I'm just it's more than one and a half isn't it no it's one and a half inches yeah and i just like to draw a line going across i'll do that on both of them so it matches up on both sides so i've got two lines i'm going to sew across that line down here across here up and probably just do a few stitches um reverse and then same on that one while I'm here I'm just going to do some marking out for where my rivets are going to go so I've got my centre here and here and I'm going to add two rivets so I'm going to add one at three eighths of an inch down from that top line and then one three eighths of an inch up and I'll do the same with this one that's my centre there and there and we're going three eighths of an inch up and three eighths inches down okay that's for the next step but while i had this out that's what i was going to do so i'm just going to top stitch now using a stitch length 3.5 and go all the way around that box please when we go to the other camera thank you Make sure you reverse your stitch. And you go nice and slow. And you're using already that stitch length that you've used on your handle. That top stitching. One more stitch. going to do the other handle side as well okay. 
make sure you reverse your stitch as well at the start and at the end because I just nearly forgot. to the oh yeah overhead camera please I thought we we're on the wrong camera then <laughs> I know they said sewing machine camera Michael but we haven't actually properly got a sewing machine camera yet okay so where those two dots were on both of those I'm going to now get a punch and punch four holes in them and add some rivets like I said this isn't in the pattern this is me just for prosthetics and making it look nicer. You can use Chicago screws if you've got Chicago screws. Okay, so I'm going to just get the four rivets. While we're on this camera, Michael, please may pass me more rivet press. Thank you. Here you go. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Thank you. Right, okay, so with rivets, um, you've got a bit like cam snaps. You've got one that's got like a, a bar that sticks up with a, um, a cap. And then you've got a snap, um, not a snap, a cap side which has got a little, like a small little barrel sticking out that should be hollow and this one's rounded. What happens is they actually close up on top of each other with the fabric or the garment, what you've got inside in between them. And then you use a special tool. Now I use, because I've got arthritis, I use this tool here. This is a rivet press. It's got specific dies that I've brought and attached to this for these, snap, uh, for these um, rivets. You can actually set um, cam snaps with this and grommets, eyelets, um, so yeah. Now you can do a hand setting tool which is a little anvil, a little tube and a hammer but when you do that make sure you do it on the ground rather than on the table because if the rivets don't press properly together and crush together what will happen is the barrel will bend and then within time this will snap off and obviously leave a hole. So you're going to get the one with the pokey bit, the larger stem sticking out and you're going to poke those all the way through on those. Flip that over and it should be the fact that they're sticking out. You get your cap part and pop those on. You'll hear a click. That means they're clicked into place for the next step. And then like the cam snap, now please maybe go to the front view camera so they can see me use this. Like the, um, the cam snap, this part here that's at the bottom will sit perfectly in the actual area of where that rivet cap is. and then you just press down and you do that to all four. You don't need four, I just like the look of four. <clears throat> now you can get Chicago screws, so you punch the holes and you screw them in. I've got those come in, in different colours. We are super friendly and I only let my groups be super friendly as well. I don't like I don't like anything bad. But I'll tell you the reason why is mine and Michael's children, um, they're not mine, they're my stepchild kids. They actually help with the business and they actually do go into Facebook and stuff like that and help with the um the running of the groups as alongside as my other people, but they they're me. 
when they're in so you could be talking to them rather than me so we do like to keep it friendly and light and floaty light right please now we go to the overhead camera please and while you're there can you put my rivet press back please <laughs> actually i need it for another step you might as well just keep it over by you please thank you it's just super heavy i can't lift it right okay so the next thing you can do is i'm not going to do this now but if you've got like a button you can sew a button on that says handmade because you can get those from ebay um mine's got my logo on it i'm just going to pop one there or you can add um in my shop and obviously you get your 10 percent discount up until january the 29th of this month of this year you can add like a handmade metal tag and I've got plenty of videos that show you how to install those on my um, on mine. So I'll be sewing that and you'll see that on the next live into place. Now I'm going to move on to the back part of the bag. Oh look, Blue Peter style. <laughs> if you don't know what Blue Peter is, it's a kids programme that they used to make things a lot. And... Um, they used to say, here's one I made earlier. <laughs> right, okay. So, you're going to need, for this, you're going to need, obviously, your A and G assembled with your fusible fleece. Okay, you're going to need, my post-it notes here. You know, you're going to need your shoulder cushion and your cushion pad. So, you've got fusible interfacing on your shoulder pad cushion piece and you'll need that piece of fusible fleece that i tell you to cut out okay then you'll need two small d-ring tabs like i said i've used a smaller measurement because i'm using smaller d-rings um i'm using these so i'm using um one and a half inch wide rather than i think the two inches or three inches wide I'm using one and a half inches wide by four inches and I've got my large D-ring tab. Obviously I'm not using a D-ring so I've made it shorter Um, I've made it smaller width of one and a half because I'm using an O-snap ring. Now the reason why I'm using an O-snap ring is because I can actually implement this at a later stage. So it's not in my seam when I come to sew the bag together. The first thing you're going to do is, and there's a reason why I haven't fused this because I need to show you how much gap you need. So you're going to pop that wrong side facing up. Then you've got your glue side of your fusible fleece wrong side facing down. You need to have at least half an inch gap free of um, fusible fleece. I'm going to flop, flip that over, still making sure you've got equal amounts missing and you're going to fuse that into place. Oh, well done. Have you actually made your back yet, Margaret, of your quilt? Oh, don't need to turn that off yet. If you're wondering what Margaret's making, um, she's making a quilt, which I've got a quilt along in my channel, um, of some artwork that I drew. Okay, so you now need to bring those up and press those into place. So it should approximately be around about half an inch up. And press that into place now if it's coming undone don't worry we're going to press it from the other side and you're going to bring that bit down try and get your iron not onto that fusible fleece because you don't want to burn your fusible fleece on the bottom of your own then i'm just going to roll it under and then pop a pop my steam on that to set that into place now if you've got a clapper and i don't mean a round of applause i mean the clapper you can pop that on top of there 
Now I'm going to roll that seam, um, that that excess seam under, and do the same with this one. Just pop that on top. That will make it crisp. If you've got a clapper, that's the best thing um, for pressing. I use it a lot in quilting. Okay, okay so you've got a nice, neat um, part here. Now you need to get your large D-ring tab. I should have got that out, just. Okay, large D-ring tab. And your D-ring or O-ring. Now my O-ring's around about an inch, but I'm gonna go to the point where it's gonna be a slim. I'm gonna bring those two long edges into the center. Now if you don't want it that slim, and you want it a bit wider, you can actually just press in a quarter of an inch. But I'm, I'm gonna go slim for mine. So I'm just going to quickly wire my iron, still got some steam in it. Okay. Then you're going to fold that in half. Now you can press it if you want to. Mine's still warm enough to actually finger press it. I'm going to pop this on and pop a pin or a mark, making sure those two raw edges match up. Now, if you've got a D ring, you can't take your D ring off. Mine's got a snap on that I can take the ring off and on. If you're using a D ring, the D ring will need to stay on. Okay. So I'm going to make a mark of where that kind of falls, where that barrel is. Where's my pen? There it is. Okay, I'm just making a mark. That's for future reference and you'll understand and it'll click into your head while I've done that. I'm going to pop that clip there and just keep that folded and pop that out of there. So, you're going to measure down from the top panel, so you need to find the centre top and centre bottom. And snip it into those centres, or mark those centres. From the top, you need to measure down one inch. Pop your centre mark onto a, cent uh, a dominant line on your um, table, on your mat. There's my six. My six on my rule is um, the actual centre. I'm going to fold this in half and just finger press one of the edges, which is going to be the top edge. Going to run quilters tape along both of those edges. Yep, more quilters tape. Uh, there it is. Now, if Angie's, uh, Angie is still watching, um, you know in the club where you said you've only just been introduced to quilters tape and you've put in your first zip, you'll notice that I will use quilters tape a lot and you're probably noticing that in this live tonight. So, 
because you're asking what ice can you use quilters tape for okay so I'm going to peel off those so you kind of kind of know where that center is I've got a little bit of a crease make sure this is still straight and an inch down match up the centers and stick that into place but not in that area so we're going to stick it on these areas here stick that down and where that area is is where your that d-ring tab is going to go in side and where that marking i put down is going to be to the point where i pop that in no thank you and then I should be able to get my my o-ring in and out of that right pulling it okay leave that on for a minute while I'll straighten this up there you go Right, take that off because I know my walking foot will not go over that at all. Okay. okay, so I'm going to top stitch along here and along here. And where this part here is, I'm just going to do a little square with an X through. Now you should be able to feel where this tab starts and where it ends. If you can't, or if you can't guess it underneath your sewing machine, you can draw a box on. I think I'll draw a box on so you guys can see. It doesn't have to be a big box, it just has to be a box that's going on the tab. And you're doing an X for it as well. So you're going to top stitch along here and along here and then you're going to do the top stitching of the box. I'm going to use a stitch length number four because I'm coming to quite some bulk now. And then we will add the handles. Please may we go to the, over, um, the front view please. Thank you. Alright, stitch length number four. So you don't have to back stitch at the start and at the end, but you will need to back stitch a little when it comes to the box. Now, if you are using a D-ring, you will have the D-ring to go around. So just manufacture that in. You might want to move it out of the way or pull it out of the way as you're going past or change your foot over to like a zipper foot or a standard foot or if you've got a slim walking foot my walking foot's quite wide so I definitely wouldn't have got my walking foot over that o-ring right so I've gone top and bottom of that cushion pad and now I'm just going to basically do the the square perfect squares I'll tell you that for sure but <laughs> it's what needs to be done some people will will want to add a rivet in that area you can add a rivet if you want to please might we go to the overhead camera please thank you okay okay so if you did draw some markings on there just run your hot iron over it
Okay, I'm not going to do the zipper pocket tonight. All I'm going to do is add the um, the D ring connections at the bottom and the actual handle tonight. And then next week we'll start off with doing the um, inside zip pockets, the outside zip pocket, and finishing off the bag. Right. So once again, like we did last time, we need to measure down three inches and in. So. Down three inches, one, two, three. Mark those lines on and measure in one and a quarter. So you've got two L's, one back to front, one normal, and then you're obviously going to do the same with that. Stick those into place, stitch round. Totally up to you if you want to put rivets on. I will personally put rivets on, it's what I like doing, so I'll quickly do that. Stitch it all the way around and put the rivets in. I'm going to be using it for everything. You will, Angie. <laughs> I'm trying to get sponsored by it. <laughs> the amount of stuff I go through. just small pique picture yeah you have so it's a beautiful picture maybe you want to put a picture up in, in the actual um, general quilt um, in the general group Margaret Yeah, always test your fabric first. I did that. Um, oh, come on! I did that a couple of um, days ago when I first started cutting this fabric out for this this um, pattern. Okay, so once again, like we did last time, you're going to measure up from that bottom of the. Oh, that's obviously not sticky. So as it's not sticky, I'm going to pop a pin in there. You do get the odd bit that's not actually sticky. And I'll say I've just hit it. Right, okay, so. Faintly see my lines. I actually need a new friction pen, but it'll wait. Okay, I'm just going to top stitch all the way around like I did last time using the stitch length number four because I've got quite a large amount of bulk there now. Definitely make sure you've got a size 16 needle in your sewing machine and basically top stitch on those sewn lines that you've already done and across those two drawn lines. Please never go to the camera at the front, please. Thank you. And reverse your stitch. the one done and move up here now 
lucky. I don't like pins, as you noticed, I haven't pinned much today. I hate pins. Okay, so I've top stitched my nose. The next thing I will do is I'm not going to do it now, I'm going to do it off camera, but add the two rivets in. Just going to get rid of those two marks. So I'll basically um, add my two rivets there. I'm now going to go on to the two snaps at the bottom and then basically the next sew along will be complete in the bag. Let me just pop that there so I don't get this all confused up. Right, so I'm skipping this step for tonight and then obviously in two weeks time I will go over this step with you. Um, we're adding the snaps at the bottom. So when I say snaps, is this is actually a convertible bag. It can be a backpack, it can be a crossbody bag, or it can just be a carry bag. And if I find the pictures, which are at the back. At the bottom here, obviously I've used Velcro on this, but at the bottom here, your actual um, trigger clasps or your um, swirl clasps will click into D rings at the bottom. It just means here, just means that you can make it into a backpack. So from going here, which is what we've just implemented up here and going down. So one strap this side, one strap that side. That's if you're a larger person. If you're not a larger person, you can actually feed, open up the strap fully and feed it through that D ring at the top. Now that's only if you've used a one inch or bigger um, D ring at the top. A lot of paperwork here. Right, okay. Da, 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 da. Okay, where is that piece gone? I know what that measurement is, it's three quarters inches up. So it's an inch up, sorry. An inch up from the bottom, we're just gonna mark two marks either side. And then this is where the D-ring tabs are going to fall. You can use cam snaps, you can use Velcro. Um, um, you can leave them flapping around if you want to, if you don't want to use either or. Totally up to you. I'm using cam snaps. Right, so my rivets were nine millimeter. Um, the cap is nine millimeter, however, the tube is six mil. Now, the ones that I sell are seven millimeter caps um, and um, six mil barrel. However, I have got some nine millimeter caps and some um, six, six millimeter barrels coming. Um, actually, should be here any, any day now. And I've got rainbow because I know that's the most commonest one I get asked for. However, I've never had rainbow ones in stock before. Right, because we are using these, we're going to have the raw edges meeting into the centre. Now, Chicago screws, you can get 9 9mm nine caps or 10mm caps. Um, and the barrels are generally 6, 10, and 6, 7, no, 6, 8, and 10. 
in Chicago Squares. I think Emma Line goes by measurement of inch. So Emma Line bags does hardware, um, and you can get that from so, some shops. I know in the UK you can buy it from likes of um, So Hot. Um, they sell them in um, one eighth of an inch. I think it's the last time I bought them anyway. Yes, for rainbow. Yeah, I've got rainbow ones coming. I had to, I've had to do a massive order from my wholesalers abroad and they're taking forever to get here. Because we had a bit of a dispute over the customs charge and I worked it out and I worked it out correct and they were asking me for more and I knew it wasn't that much more. So right, okay. I'm going to top feed this in first like so and then I'm going to top stitch from here across as close as you can get and down. Now I personally am going to change over my foot on my sewing machine to my standard foot so I know my walking foot won't slip and jump a stitch when I'm going over this part here because I know my walking foot will be riding on this here and I know it's going to jump stitches so if I pin that and that okay so you're basically top stitching one eighth of an inch away down this long edge as close as you can get to this this D ring or whatever you're using down straight and then one eighth of an inch away from this edge and you're going to do that for both both um d wing tabs please remember to go to the front view camera right i'm just going to change my foot i do apologize um wrong foot i'm going to change it to a standard a foot on my sewing machine take my walking foot off. My walking foot is integrated. If you're wondering why my walking foot looks a bit weird. It's got a little claw at the back that goes into a junction box at the back of the machine. telling the machine I've just taken off the walking foot so it knows it's a standard foot. Okay so I'm going to now top stitch one eighth of an inch and I'm using a stitch length 3.5, uh, a number 3 sorry not 3.5. You don't need to reverse your stitch at the start and at the end. It's totally up to you if you do. And you're going as close as you can to that D-ring and where your foot can ride naturally and not jump any stitches. So these need to go here and here but first of all you need to work out if you're using a cam snap 
for it to click into place when you haven't got the um, the shoulder straps on and you've got it just as a crossbody bag. I'm going to use cam snaps but if you're going to use velcro you're just basically going to attach the velcro to this side here and on there and do a cross with a box around it but I like cam snaps so I need four of those Those be all the same. Nope. Yep. And four of those. No. Two. Is it? That's my dyslexia coming out there. <laughs> oh. Right, two and two. Okay, so first of all, you're going to work on this the D ring tab first. You're going to measure three eighths of an inch from where the D ring is. I'm going to change that because mine are quite chunky D rings. When I ripped the pattern, the D ring tabs were, um, the D rings were a lot thinner. So I'm going. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, five eighths of an inch, and I'm going to mark there, and I'm going to do this one as well. So that's from this part here, five eighths of an inch. So that's Okay, and then just like last time, poke a hole in. This time we're going to add the um, the male part. So we're gonna pop that snap in, that cam snap cap through, and put your, pop your male part on that bit. Do the same with this one. Male part. Okay, I've got those two parts there. Then you're going to clip that into place on the side. Okay, then you're going to lift it up and draw where the centre is where that snap will fall on both of those. so pull those two away and then repeat the same thing pop the holes through now this time this part of the the snap is going through the fleece through to the outside then you're going to pop your female on top and then obviously cam snap tool and then do the same with this one. Then you're going to click these into place, like so. And then you're going to base stitch those on I'm going to do that off camera but when I say base stitch I'm just going to sew those um, one eighth of an inch away 
and then this will be ready for next week's uh, not next week's in two two weeks times so along for where we attach the outside back zip but you should have two finished out of fronts and backs by the time we come to meet next please now we go to the front view camera and that's it <laughs> I'm, I'm doing it in stages because I know a lot of you are beginners and personally when I first started bag making because I'm, I'm an oh well I say an ex quilter I'm a quilter my going from quilting to bag making was a bit daunting and learning all the new technology and terminology and stuff like that love to see you again um yeah I think I'm on with John Scott on the 11th um on Sewing Street I do love John Scott, he is an amazing person and if you ever get to hear his history about what he's been in film wise and stuff it's amazing so yeah. So this is the reason why I'm, I'm stopping here because we're going to move on to a bit more difficult steps um, next in two weeks time to finish off the bag. Now I'm not going to show you the binding, I'm just going to show you how to attach the binding to make it a finished bag. To make the binding, um, the bias binding, you need to go back to visit that video. And the same with making the, the shoulder straps or the crossbody strap, you need to go back to that video, um, which I will link after the um, the live's finished. Um, you have 10% off my shop um, up until the 29th of, um, I was about to say December, I wish it was Christmas, uh, <laughs> up until um, January the 29th, um, 2022 um, and that's rjfmakes.com uh, Michael can you click that button please thank you <laughs> you get used to it if you are new to my channel and you like the content please click that subscribe that helps me a lot um, and the more subscribers I can get means the further I can go up in the search engine and get more people um, viewing and yeah making thanks ever so much for joining us tonight and thanks to my moderators and all the people that have messaged and that if i've missed any questions don't hesitate i will go on there in the next 24 hours and answer every question once again michael says thank you for joining didn't you he's waving to you he will never come on camera he tries his hardest not to come on camera but thank you ever so much and I look forward to seeing you in two weeks time. Click that remind button when it goes live. See ya. <laughs>